Pakistani Christian sentenced to death for blasphemous texts. A court in Lahore has sentenced a Christian man to death for having committed blasphemy in the latest case of Pakistan's strict religious laws being applied against religious minorities. As, uh, Asif Pervias, uh, 37, has been in, custody, been in custody since 2013 when he was accused of having sent, quote, blasphemous texts to a former supervisor at work. Speaking in his own defense in court earlier in the trial, trial uh, Pervaz claimed the supervisor confronted him after he quit work at the factory. And when he refused to convert to Islam, he was accused of having sent blasphemous texts to this former supervisor. The court rejected his testimony and sentenced him to death. Pakistan's strict blasphemy laws prescribe a mandatory death sentence death penalty for the crime of insulting Islam's prophet Muhammad and strict penalties for all other infractions such as insulting Islam, the Holy Quran, or certain holy people, aka the Sahaba. Or companion okay, not, prophet. Not that it matters because blasphemy is a bullshit crime, but a lot of these accusations that are being taken seriously doesn't even have an people don't even have evidence for the blasphemy taking place. No. Like they don't, right? No. So basically, but but now, even though with no evidence, now this guy is sentenced to death. Death. He but, has been in. He he was been in prison since 2013 over this. To, for no evidence, and somebody is like, "Oh, convert to Islam," and you're like, "No," and like, "Okay, I'm gonna accuse you of blasphemy," and you're like seven years in prison now, and now you get a death sentence, even though there is like, and now because it's working, like this has been going on for a couple of years. And now this uh, Pakistan is escalating because people see that it's working and you could just accuse people of blasphemy with no evidence and the court takes it seriously. So everybody's being accused of blasphemy and because every now anybody that has like an issue with somebody else, they could just accuse them of blasphemy. Like we had like how many cases of blasphemy in one month recently? Last week we reported 47. I think it was 42. Right. Last week, we reported that 42 cases of blasphemy have been registered in the previous 30 days before we have reported on that. There are more since then. I follow a guy on Twitter who regularly documents every blasphemy case he comes across in Pakistan in ongoing cases, day by day by day by day by it's day. It's like you're like your you get the blasphemy charges you get blasphemy charges and everybody gets accused of blasphemy and like what the hell look under your seat what is it it's a blasphemy charge <laughs> what <laughs> oprah yeah you can <laughs> um what the, no what it, the fuck is happening to pakistan like we keep getting worse and worse We're i going. think we should have hara sultan or abdullah gondol on the show soon particularly Abdullah Gondal, to talk about what is going on in Pakistan right now. Because there might be a bigger picture that I'm missing, but things are accelerating and they are escalating at a severe rate in Pakistan right now. There, yeah. I think Pakistan is on the brink of major anti-Shia extremist violence. Mm. There are major anti anti-Shia extremist um, protests happening in Pakistan that I was, was watching on Twitter literally today. Um, and the, what we have reported on last week with um, these 42 cases that have been registered in the previous 30 days was the majority of those cases were against Shia in a classic Sahaba versus Ahl Bayt type of um, conflict. There um, it's it's severe and it seems to be accelerating the persecution of religious minorities and i think i'm missing a factor of like why it's happening so quickly and so severely right now because it works because of the for the past seven years now people are saying like hey we like they, this guy's getting a death sentence even though we didn't provide any evidence like who else i don't like that i could accuse of blasphemy now well, like Actually, one thing I forgot to mention is that um, it is most often um, only typically religious minorities who are actually given the death penalty for blasphemy. Um, 
if you can still be charged if you're not a religious minority, but you're less likely to get a death penalty, it should also be noted for sake of being fair that so far no one has actually been um, no death penalty for blasphemy has so far been executed in Pakistan, right? Yeah. It's but, come close, but just because it hasn't happened yet does not mm. mean that we are not going to highlight it because we are never. A lot of people have died the first. No, no. So people so have so also been come after by the mob itself. It doesn't matter if it's being executed by the state, like Mashal Khan. The mob, the people will lynch you themselves. You are often safer right. with the police. That's how severe yeah. the situation is. So for most, there's been a lot of deaths because of blasphemy in Pakistan, but most, all of them, the government didn't even get the chance to kill them because the mob took care of them for the government, right? Um, so it's so bizarre because, like, you go on, Susanna. Like, for example, within the past month, Tahir Nasim, a U.S. citizen who was tricked into returning to Pakistan because he was an Ahmadi Muslim who claimed to be a prophet, he mm. was shot dead in the middle of court mm. by a teenager because this person thought that they were not prosecuting him quickly enough. And there were right. mobs of th demonstrations of thousands of people in support of the murderer. Who shot this man dead in the middle of court? Well, that's I think where the mob violence is. I think that's the point, right? Because it doesn't matter so much whether you have evidence. It doesn't matter so much whether you actually have any kind of court or authority, you know, or institution oversee this or enact these things. It's that any person anywhere can appear seemingly accuse anyone of doing this oh. it's as if you yourself become all judge and jury and if the mob takes it then fine particularly mm. if it's you know religious minorities or but i also think part of this is that people are using this to gain things like land or cows or wife or whatever it is from a lot of these people that they may be accusing because right. it's so very similar to like these witch um burnings that or witch trials that we saw right. in the united states and in europe okay so aj saying pakistan last month came out with a blasphemy reporting app that's insane if it's true um let's look into that because we should cover that if that's true um Another thing is, um, so let's put in context. The government um, is uh, putting people in like really like long-term prison sentences just because of the accusation, right? So that the government is like this guy was in like so many people are in jail right now because of blasphemy charges. And even if they are, even if they come and like, oh, you're not guilty, they would like they spend years in prison until they come to that decision, right? Um, even even if there's zero evidence, you have to wait years in prison until somebody decides like, hey, can you can I go home now? Uh, but but no, if, that doesn't even happen. The government does pass around death sentences even without evidence. So but so far it hasn't carried out any single of these death sentences. But again, that's like um, it's still insane that the people are getting death sentences by the government, even that none of them has been carried out. And they, remember, the reason why they haven't been carried out. Is because most of these people, the mob was like, we're not waiting for the government. The government is not doing its Islamic duty. We're going to take care of it for, for the government, right? Um, people yeah. will be murdered just for speaking out against this treatment. Their right. own ministers have been assassinated over this. Lawyers of people who are defending black alleged blasphemers were assassinated for this. This mm. is how high the stakes are. Okay, so I would just like to say that any religious minority or secular activist in Pakistan is constantly in my thoughts. The people I know who have made the decision to stay there and continue this fight while other people have made the decision to leave and try to create change from abroad are by far the bravest people I know. Um, so I do want to address among, this among them. So shouts out to you guys because it's in it's incredible. I do want to address this comment by before we go to Rivka. Um, Darmek is saying 
India also becoming Pakistan. Hindus killed on blaspheming prophet uh, Kamlesh Tiwara is latest example. Uh, okay, as bad as things are in India, though, it's not even close to how bad things are in Pakistan, right? Like India, things are really bad in India, especially if you compare it to like, you know, United States, Canada, and Western European countries. Like things are really, really bad when it comes to blasphemy situation in India. But again, it's not even close to Pakistan. In fact, even Islamic countries are not as bad as, you know, many Islam, most Islamic countries are not even as bad as Pakistan. That's how crappy Pakistan's situation is right now. Um, Rivka. So I don't know. Did we say that also that Asif, the gentleman who's been said, says he's a Christian? Because there's a lot of sources that say he is. Um, we mentioned at the I top of the hour that he was Christian. Okay, I did. I was, came from I was a, just, I forgot. alleged conversion. Yeah. Attempted um, conversion. I don't know if this is actually the case, but some of the reading I was doing on this was quoting Saif al Maluk, who was also Asaya Bibi's lawyer. Um, about this guy and some says that he's his lawyer and some it's hard to tell I can't some because sometimes I think they might be translated and it's not always clear but I just thought that that was interesting um, and this guy I know receives lot lots of death threats and um, actually had gotten some asylum in the Netherlands but decided to give it up to go back there to keep defending people so this guy also amazing human being um okay so shriya was also saying india is on the path to pa of pakistan again i don't think so again as bad as things are in india i don't think any country will ever be like any country that is not already as bad as pakistan will ever come to being as close to as being as bad as pakistan right so again like guys like um i do think like a lot of people in india you know, just like in the United States, they come, you know, whenever you say shit is stuff bad other places, they might exaggerate how bad things they are in India. Again, I know things are bad. I know things are bad in India. I've experienced, I've experienced how bad things are in India. We know a thing or two. We, we know a thing or two about how bad things are in India. But I don't, I still think that it's, it's important to keep things in perspective. Things could, things are bad, but they're not that bad like that is really bad okay anyways um wait let me see the whole bangalore city burnt on and a blasphemy done to a prophet okay 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 all right we're gonna don't worry guys we're gonna whenever this shit happens in india we're gonna cover it so you can be sure about that okay and in fact we did cover that riot in bangalore and i'm so oh. tired of hindu foot apologists coming at me on twitter talking about what about this like we talked about it okay yeah our Both sides. So good. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Okay. Yeah. Every every time we every time we cover Pakistan, people are like, "But what about India? Have you looked at India?" And every time we cover India, you're like, "What about Pakistan? You're not gonna talk about Pakistan?" I'm like, "God damn it! We we cover both. We cover both. Like Jesus, we got a new member." Uh, uh, Truth Seeker. <laughs> Thank you, Truth Seeker. Welcome to Satan's Minions. Hmm. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you, Truth Seeker. Um, okay, news. Thank you for joining us. Subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell thingy. If you haven't, I don't know why. What has what's holding you back? Okay. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, why haven't you subscribed to our channel? Explain that to us, please. Like, bell, <laughs> and also if you if you're not getting notifications and stuff because youtube is not telling people that we have shows because youtube is like oh this person told us that they want to get your shows right they want to get your videos but nah you we think is no and oh look oh they also hit the bell button but nah you guys are too controversial we want to show them mainstream stuff we want to show them cnn or cat videos or whatever but even there are people are like, no, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we don't think you want this. They're like, no, please show it to us. We say to you, we want to see Atheist Republic. And YouTube is like, no, we think we know what's better for you than you yourself. So to solve that, link, there's a link in the description, uh, which is to our newsletter. So hopefully some of our, we could email it to you. So hopefully you get some of our content that way. Okay. So yeah subscribe to our newsletter as well and share share our videos because 
you know, we do get demonetized. That's an obvious on every one of our videos. So F that. But we don't care about that anymore. <laughs> but we also get deprioritized. And that's even more damaging to us. Deprioritized, what does that mean? That means we're not, we don't show up on the suggested, you know, videos on the right and all that, you know, on, the, on people's homepages. And that's how channels grow. Unfortunately, we can't grow. So we need you guys to share our videos. 